Spotted a pattern with these top 5 yet? The racing game editions have gone from the current gen to the PS3 and 360 era, and now I'm going to go one stage further back and talk about the PS2 era of racing games. For me, Andre Harrison, my favourite, and I really started developing my passion for all things wheels. From tuners to incredible levels of simulation we didn't think were possible in the early to mid 2000s on what was one of the best con gaming console eras of all time. So without further ado, here's my top 5 PlayStation 2 racing games. Number 5 is Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. Yeah, that's right, the other major car tuning series. Don't worry, the other one features later. Anyway, what many people failed to realise was just how over the top Midnight Club was, and that's why I loved it so much. From ridiculous levels of nitrous to 250 miles an hour plus top speeds, to abilities that included slowing down time and barging rival cars 200 feet down the road, you know, just like in all those 17 Fast and Furious movies. Combine that with some decent recreations of Detroit and San Diego, the branch of Rockstar that created the game, some very cool cars and concepts previously not seen in racing games like the Chrysler Me 412, and the game had a customization level as good, if not better, than its other rivals. This game overall was very, very fun, yet very, very silly, and I dropped many hours into it as a teenager. Definitely check it out, and if you do, get the remix version with even more extra content. Now, for those who know me well, I know that I often love a good underrated gem, and here's another one for you. Who here remembers Micro Machines version 4? For me, this was the best game in the franchise and a concept that still gets copied a decade later. Without a doubt, this was the best game in the franchise's 20-year history, including bright, vibrant classics, a good blend of challenge without being ridiculously frustrating, and a superb variety of cars to keep you entertained, with true elements of collecting and trading thrown in for some nice extra depth. And trust me, you haven't lived until you've gotten the mates around with their controllers and played the game's four-person multiplayer. It is incredible fun, and it will probably have your pad wrapped around someone's neck by the end of it. If there was an honorary most underrated stamp on the list, it would go to Micro Machines. They just don't make them like they used to. God, I sound old. Number 3 was, is one of the most famous PS2 racers, and I'd argue one of the most beloved. Need for Speed Most Wanted. Need for Speed is another one of those franchises where you know it's been around for as long as time itself, but for me, this is where the franchise peaked. An edgy, gritty arcade racer with the usual deep levels of customization from EA, but a game that was also able to capture the dirty, gritty side of illegal street racing, often seen only in movies. It was also accompanied by one of the best soundtracks in video game history, featuring the likes of Stars of Beyond, Avenged Sevenfold, Lupe Fiasco, Jamiroquai, and Bullet for My Valentine. The gameplay was brilliant, arcade style and a little more restrained than its Midnight Club counterpart, but it also had time-mending elements for precision driving, a good variety of modes, and the brilliant pursuit gimmick, some of the most fun you can have while only breaking the law in theory rather than for real. Combine that with a slightly corny but actually well-presented story with a killer twist at the end, and you have one of the console's truly legendary racers, even if the main villain's named Clarence. No wonder he named himself after the best fighting robot ever. Can't win them all, right? Number 2 is a top 5 first on Race World. A tie! I couldn't talk about one of these two games here without mentioning the other, because for me, Gran Turismo 3 and 4 are both equally amazing and equally important. Gran Turismo 3 came out in 2001 as a PS2 launch title, and for me, was the game that really showed what the PS2 could do. Built with passion and graphical detail not seen for a racing game before, it was a magnificent overall game, iconic in its status. Gran Turismo 4 came out in 2005 and pushed the previous foundation of GT3 to its limits. Over a thousand cars, a plethora of fictional and real tracks, it was the first game ever released that was playable in 1080i high definition and as a complete experience was an incredible simulation game that you would spend hours and hours to complete. Me included. I dropped over 500 to get to 99% completion when I was 14. This is when Polyphony was the king of the sims and just thinking about the games make me emotional because they hold so many amazing memories. 
Dear Sony, rem remember what made this franchise great already, please. And at number one, one of the greatest arcade races of all time, without any question, it's Burnout 3. It's often said that the third games of a lot of franchises refine their game and represent their franchise. And Burnout 3 was such an incredible leap forward from the second, it was mind-blowing. From the aggressive nature of driving, evolving into the incredible takedown system, the freedom of boost usage for the first time, the better and more dynamic crash events, and an even greater sense of speed, wrapped up in a deep, rewarding package of a brilliant soundtrack, including My Chemical Romance, Rise Against, Franz Ferdinand and more. Burnout 3 might be the greatest racing game ever made. Seriously. And it's crazy that Criterion Games have two all-time classics and the brilliant Revenge under its belt. How long have I got to wait for another Burnout game for crying out loud? I guess we really do live in the lazy generation, huh? Anyway, got any other PS2 classics I haven't mentioned? Any gems with villains aren't named Clarence? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, I've been Andre Harrison, and thanks very much for watching.